Hello and welcome to the Thursday, April 26, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, Drupal users, be aware there is a new critical remote code execution vulnerability that you need to patch for and this time the vulnerability has already been exploited by the time I record this. Now, this new remote code execution vulnerability is apparently a variation of the vulnerability that was patched in March, but apparently the patch didn't go far enough and still allowed some versions of the attack to pass. Given that, it's no surprise that attackers were able to weaponize this new vulnerability rather quickly. Exploit code has been published to Pastebin. The exploit against Drupal 7 published to Pastebin does require that the attacker is logged in to the system. So a little bit more tricky to exploit in this particular variant than the old one, but there is a possibility that other exploits that do not require authentication may be released as well. And well, if you have looked at Linux malware like the ones that may be installed by the Drupal vulnerability, you probably came across a number of shell scripts. What attackers often do is they use Unix utilities like wget or curl to then download additional code. But Xavier today wrote up a little shell script that a reader actually submitted to us that uses neither. It does establish a simple IRC bot using nothing but bash. The trick that's being used here is that you can actually pipe data to dev TCP and establish TCP connection that way and stream data both ways. Now, of course, a lot of the low level work has to be done in bash as well, but for something simple, like for example, an IRC bot, this may actually work quite nicely. And in particular, if you're thinking minimum systems in and of things style systems, tricks like this may work on systems that don't have a lot of these tools like wget and curl installed. And if you're like me traveling quite a bit, you hopefully gave up trusting hotel room doors and hotel room safes. Well, there's yet another reason to not keep anything valuable in your room. F-Secure came across a vulnerability in popular RFID based hotel room door locks that actually allows someone to create a master key. All they need is they need an existing key for the particular hotel. This this doesn't even have to be a valid key, it can be an expired key, so maybe a key some guest discarded when they left the hotel. And using data from this key, they will then be able to create a master key that's able to open any lock in the hotel. What scared me the most about this particular exploit is that the fact that this key was used is not logged by the particular lock. Now, typically if stuff is stolen from your hotel room, then the hotel may be able to review these locks to figure out if anybody entered your hotel room other than yourself. Well, in this case, you wouldn't even prove that anybody opened the door. The vulnerability has been fixed by the manufacturer of these locks. I have no idea how difficult it is to apply this patch for hotels, whether that's just a central system that has to be patched or if they actually have to go around and patch individual locks. And researchers at Checkmarks came across an interesting issue with Amazon's Alexa. The problem here is that malicious applications may continue to listen to the user after the user is done interacting with the application. The problem here is a reprompt. The reprompt is usually an audio prompt that asks the user to repeat the question, but the reprompt may be silent so you don't actually hear it. So the application sends the reprompt and then also the application is able to wait for an additional question in addition to the reprompt, which allows the application to listen for about another 16 seconds. During that time, anything said in the room will be transcribed by Amazon and sent to the developer. 
Amazon has fixed the issue and also rolled out updated firmware, which is applied automatically for Alexa devices. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening. If you like this podcast, please tell your friends about it and your enemies tweet about it or post on it on whatever social media you're using. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.